Good morning, Internet world. Welcome to another episode of The Writing Life. I'm your host, John Harkness. I am a science fiction and fantasy author. I'm an editor. I'm a podcaster. I'm a YouTube nerd. I'm a publisher and founder of Falstaff Books. And I want to talk to you today about something near and dear to my heart. This is not so much an episode of The Writing Life as it's going to be an episode of The Reading Life. Recently, the Internet Archive released this emergency library, which sounds like a great idea. It's thousands of books, all downloadable for free. That's great. There are thousands of books available for free at any time all over the internet. There's Project Gutenberg, which is all public domain works. And there's also all sorts of ways to get free books that I'm going to be talking about later on in this video. The problem, however, is that the Internet Archive did not only put forth books that were in public domain. They put out links to a lot of current copyrighted material, which is, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, piracy. And not the cool Jack Sparrow, but you have heard of me. Piracy, the taking food off my table piracy. I make a living selling books. My primary income is selling ebooks. The second largest chunk of my income is selling audiobooks. So selling digital material is what feeds my family, pays my mortgage, pays my health insurance, all of those things. Boy, my hair looks like ass today. I'm sorry. This is what you get when you watch videos, videos done by a Leo. We worry about our hair. And the quarantine beard is really starting to get out of hand. But anyway, we're not here to talk about my quarantine beard. We're here to talk about piracy. Now, in the past, I have very often said that for self-published authors and small press authors, obscurity is a bigger enemy than piracy because the idea of but you have heard of me does is one of those things that people on in at my level mid list and lower authors nobody's heard of us enough to steal our shit so piracy is not a huge problem for me personally but as a publisher that is a problem because it's not just my money it's my author's money too and some of them also are making a living off of their writing and it's my job to protect their ability to make their living. And then once you get up into New York published authors and authors with bigger distribution, piracy becomes a massive problem for them. There are multiple stories of authors who lost contracts because so many copies of one of their books and series were pirated that people didn't buy it. I've seen accounts of young adult authors who had a really killer debut in a series. New York Times best-selling book. Second book did pretty well, but not as well. And then when the third book launched, it was all over every pirate site on launch day, and sales tanked. So more copies of the book were stolen than were sold, and you know what? That's when publishers cancel series and authors don't get to finish writing those series because this is a business and as much as I love writing, I'm not doing it for my health. If a book doesn't sell, I don't continue the series. That's on my stuff 
and it's on stuff that we do at Falstaff as well. So for authors who are publishing professionally, piracy is a giant problem and it leads to some of these things that you guys out there in internet land gripe about, which is authors never finishing a series. Well, they don't finish a series because somebody like me doesn't give them a contract to finish the series. And that happens when sales for the subsequent books in a series drop precipitously. And one of the things that makes that happen, not all of them, but one of them is piracy. So when, an, when someone like NPR publicizes this internet emergency library, this is the greatest thing ever. NPR, do your research. You're, you should be better than that. Come on. Wake up. That's theft. If it's okay to pirate an ebook, is it okay for me to walk into your place of business and steal whatever you sell or manufacture to make your living? No, it's not. So, I know that there are a lot of people right now whose incomes have gone through the basement. I know that there are a lot of people who are trying to figure out how they're going to make the rent, make the mortgage, and buying an ebook isn't on their radar. But you also still need an escape. You still need to be able to read. So here's a bunch of different ways that you can get free ebooks and almost free ebooks so that you can legally acquire plenty of stuff to read, plenty of stuff to allow you to escape the fact that the world's on fire, and maybe allay your worries a little bit. I'm going to be right back because I need props for this, so there's going to be an edit right here. Okay, I'm back. I know, you missed me. I missed you too, really. I, did. I don't even know if you're watching. What the hell? I wanted to show you some of the books that we at Falstaff are putting out there right now that you can get almost free. Every one of the books I'm about to show you is available in ebook right now for 99 cents. A Whisper of Death by Paul Barrett. This is over 100,000 words of epic fantasy. It's a dark epic fantasy, the first in a trilogy. If you like Game of Thrones, if you like Joe Abercrombie, kind of dark, real deep adventure, magical, high fantasy kind of stuff, this is 99 cents. Going Through the Change by Samantha Bryant. This is the first in the Menopausal Superheroes series. This is about women who develop superpowers during menopause. And one of the most interesting things that Samantha did with this book is that she came, she created her characters of different ages addressing many of the reasons that women go through menopause at different ages. So I found that very interesting. And this is a great book and a great trilogy. And there's just been a new novella, Friend or Foe, released in this series that goes between this, book one, and book two, which is Change of Life. Yes. Uh, they all have the word change in them because, well, menopause, and I sometimes get confused with whether Change of Life is second or Face the Change, which is book three, is second. The Mussorgsky Riddle by Darren Kennedy. This is the first in a trilogy. It's a completed trilogy. And this is a series about a dreamwalking detective who has to go inside the mind of an autistic boy who's lost inside his own head. And it's the whole series is built around a framework of classic Russian composers. So if you love music, if you love mystery, if you love magic, and if you love really lush writing, this 
Fugue and Fable trilogy. The Mazorsky Riddle is also on sale in ebook for 99 cents. Stormforged, which was the winner, a winner in the Imagine Awards in 2019. This is a young adult, new adult, superhero, a post-apocalyptic series from Patrick Dugan. It's his debut novel. The second book, Stormforged, is already out. This is about a boy with superpowers in a world where superpowers are illegal. So it's got a little Handmaid's Tale to it. It's got a little X-Men. It's a lot like X-Men Days of Future Past, if you remember that classic Chris Claremont series. And if you don't, go read that later after you've bought all my shit. Bones of Empire by Aaron Rosenberg. This is the first of the Relicant Chronicles, which is a high-adventure, Asian-themed, high-epic fantasy. There will be five books in this series. The first three are out. Bones of Empire is available for 99 cents. If you like lots of different points of view and all kinds of awesome characters with various different magics, then check out Bones of Empire. It's kind of like... An, it's kind of like anime in book form, only not manga, like book form, no pictures. Pawn's Gambit is another book by Darren Kennedy. This is Chess Meets the Avengers. If your superpowers are all based around being, play, being pieces on a galactic level chessboard in a millennia long war against good and evil, 99 cents. Perishables is one of the funniest damn books I've ever read. Everybody hates the zombie apocalypse. Everybody hates their homeowners association. So what happens when the zombie apocalypse breaks out in the middle of a homeowners association meeting? Hilarity ensues. The, the Stephen Colbert meets Stephen King analogy for this book is more apt than anything I can think of. It's by Michael G. Williams. Also just a buck, and he it's available on audiobook, or you can subscribe to a podcast and listen to Michael read it himself. The Last Volunteer by Steve Wetherill. If you're sad that the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy ended after, I don't know, seven books, you should get The Doomsayer Journeys by Steve Wetherill. It's science fiction, it's fantasy, it's British, it's funny as hell, and it's a buck. All this, all of these books are, are a dollar a piece. And, but wait, there's more. We've got something like two dozen titles on sale at Falstaff Books for 99 cents each. Any book we have that is in series that the second book in the series or more books are out, it's a dollar. Bubba the Monster Hunter, the entirety of season one, scattered, smothered, and chunked, 99 cents. Quincy Harker, Demon Hunter, the first novella, Raising Hell, that won the Manly Wade Wellman Award for Best Science Fiction and Fantasy Novel in North Carolina the year it came out, 99 cents. Changeling's Fall, an Imagine nominated novel by Emily Leverett and Sarah Adams, 99 cents. Frost and Filigree, the awesome Marvelous Beasts series starter by Natanya Barron, 99 cents. Cabinet of Aberrations by Judy Black, 99 cents. Depth of Time by James Palmer, 99 cents. I'm forgetting stuff because we've got so much shit on sale and I feel kind of like a used car salesman. Come on down and get your deals. But my point is that you don't have to steal things. And yes... I do understand that sometimes even a dollar is too much. Your entertainment budget might be zero. There are ways to do that too, legally. Bain Books is one of the preeminent publishers of science fiction, specifically military science fiction in the world. They have what's called the Bain Free Library. It's B-A-E-N. Just Google Bain Free Library. There are dozens of free ebooks there. DRM free, cash free. 
you can download those ebooks for nothing because the publisher believes that it's in their best interests to give away the series starter. You can go to a website called prolificworks.com. I'm going to put all of these URLs down in the show notes so you can check them out. If you go to prolificworks.com, they have multi-author book giveaways. A lot of these are short stories. Some of these will be just a piece of a novel. But I went on there just a couple of minutes ago and scrolled down and there's a free short story by Gail Martin that I haven't read. So there's great authors on the prolificworks.com website. And your library. Libraries participate in a program called Overdrive. Overdrive is a way that publishers sell ebooks to libraries. And we, as authors and publishers, we still get paid when those books are sold. You can go, I did not have a Charlotte Mecklenburg library card because I should not ever borrow anything from anyone. I If you want to give me things, that's great. I'll appreciate it. But don't ever expect to see it again because I'm a flake and I won't remember to give it back to you. And so I didn't have a library card because I didn't want the library fines. But just as an object lesson for this video, I went to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library website and I signed up for a library card because I know that you can get ebooks through the library for free. It took a walloping six minutes. I filled out the form, I used my phone, I took a picture of my driver's license, I emailed, I uploaded it onto the form. Boom, I had my library card number. I went through, I searched my name first because I am an egotistical prick and that's what I do. They don't have any of my books in stock. Uh, I'll be addressing that with library personnel once we're out of the quarantine. But then I searched Jim Butcher, and lo and behold, there are 24 Jim Butcher books available at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, and I didn't download any of them because I've read all of the ones that aren't checked out that I wanted to read. But my object lesson was from no library card to finding books by an author I wanted to read for free took me six minutes. It is worth six minutes of your time to not steal food off an author's table, which is what piracy does. Also, find your favorite authors, especially indie authors and small presses are the best in the world for this. Sign up for their email newsletter. If you go to falstaffbooks.com and sign up for our newsletter, you'll get two or three free ebooks just for signing up for the newsletter. You'll get a copy of Cinched, which is an anthology I edited with stories from me, um, Gail Martin, Eden Royce, um, no, Kimberly Richardson, um, Judy Black, all kinds of great authors are in that anthology and it's free. You get it just for signing up for our email newsletter and you'll get a newsletter every week with deals and then whenever we give away free ebooks to our newsletter subscribers, which happens pretty frequently, you'll be the first to know. If you go to Tor.com's website, they give away a free ebook every month and sometimes more often. Last week they gave away Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi for free to anybody who wanted it. This is a New York Times best-selling novel. It's a fantastic book and it could have been yours for free if you'd been paying attention. No. Publishers, Chris Kennedy Publishing, they give away stuff on their newsletter. Many independent authors and independent publishers give away freebies to entice people to sign up for their newsletters. Many of us also have ARC teams, advanced reader copy teams, beta readers that we use. So you can sign up for our Facebook groups. You can sign up for our street teams, 
Falstaff books, we have the Misfit Toys. Those folks get the first shot to do beta reads for our books. A beta reader is somebody who sees the book early and makes suggestions, if that's something you're into. There are plenty of ways for you to get bargain and free ebooks without ripping people off. So go out there, get a library card, go to falstaffbooks.com, pick up some of these books for 99 cents a piece along with others. Go to Bain's Free Library, go to Tor.com, go to Prolific Works. Go, get the hens, get out there, use legal means to get free books and discounted ebooks, and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I know it feels real scary right now. Me too. It's, it's a scary world right now, but eventually this is going to be over and we're going to come out of it. We're going to step out of our houses. We're going to step out of our houses without wearing bandanas. This is what I wore to go buy toilet paper this morning. I was the gothest little bandit you've ever seen. And then we're going to get back to the business of living our lives and we will all be remembered by what we do for one another during these times. So take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll be back soon.